This video is going to discuss problem 13.7 in the textbook. This is another example of an aggregate planning problem, and it's one where we have the potential to use some demand management as a way to reduce costs and manage the workforce. So in this problem, we have a disk drive manufacturer that needs an aggregate plan for July through December. We have quite a bit of information given here, including a demand forecast. We can see that there's some seasonality likely in the demand forecast. The highest point is November. We've got other costs, including holding cost, a subcontracting cost, regular and overtime labor, hiring and layoff costs, and an assumption about the number of labor hours per disk drive. They have beginning inventory of 150 items and a current workforce of 8. Another aspect that we're going to add in is something called a back order cost. For right now in the model, the back order cost is listed as zero. But we'll look at the possibility um, of having back orders as a way to manage our production and our inventory. So this problem will start out fairly similar to some others. We'll reference the beginning workers. Our workers hired and fired will be decision variables. I'm just going to enter some values for those that will be starting values. Our available workers then are the beginning workers plus the hired workers minus the fired workers. In each month, August and beyond, the beginning workers are equal to the available workers from the previous month. Once we know the available workers, we can determine the available regular work time hours. In this case, they work 20 days a month and 8 hours before overtime. So the available hours would be workers times work days times hours per day. copy that for each month. Overtime hours is a decision variable. So we will start out with a starting value. We have some regular hours available and potentially some overtime hours. So our worker hours available are the regular plus the overtime. Once we know the worker hours available, we can determine our production capacity in units. It takes four labor hours to produce one of the disk drives, so it would be the worker hours available divided by that assumption for labor hours. That is an important productivity assumption in this model. For this company, they also offer the possibility of producing units through subcontracting. In other words, letting another company manufacture the items. This is a decision variable. This comes at a certain cost, so we'll just enter a number, say 50, as a starting value. So that would be a solution where we let some other company produce 50 of these each month, although that might not be the optimal. Once we know our production capacity and 
the units that we're going to subcontract, that will then be our total production capacity. Now we need to use the inventory model. So our beginning inventory was 150 in July. That was provided. Production is a decision variable. Uh, so we'll just put some amount here as a starting value. I'm going to put a total amount that is at least enough. I'll put 650. If we did, if we produce 650 every month, that looks like that's enough to, over the course of six months, satisfy the demand forecast. The units available to meet demand are beginning inventory plus production. Demand we reference from the very top. That's from our forecast. Our ending inventory then is units available to meet demand minus demand. Alright, so we've got our ending inventory number. For beginning inventory in August and beyond, we need to reference the ending inventory from the prior month. Alright, now we get to the point of trying to handle the possibility of back ordering in this model. This is a challenging modeling uh, issue, so we'll just offer one solution here in this video. There are certainly a number of different ways you could try to incorporate this. I'm going to incorporate it here by having a minimum production number. For the first month, I'm just going to set that at zero. Now, what can happen is if we, for instance, have zero production in July and we have demand of 400, we're going to have an ending inventory of negative 250. And we'll allow that negative in ending inventory. What it says in our, in our textbook is that if demand is unmet, it needs to be met in the following month. So for the following month, we're going to have to have at least enough production to cover this shortage for July. Okay, so my minimum production is going to be as follows. I'll use an IF formula. It's a logical formula. So if the prior ending inventory is less than zero, then the minimum amount we have to produce is negative one times that ending inventory. So that will just take the negative sign off. If it's not less than zero, then there is no minimum production. This will ensure, uh, as we'll see by experimenting with the model, that our back orders are filled the following month. So we're saying that if we run a negative ending inventory in July, we have to at least cover that in August. We may choose to also cover the current demand as well. Okay, so that's going to require a constraint on production when we get to solve it. All right, the regular labor cost, they state their labor cost is an hour. So regular hours times the $12 labor cost per hour. O 
overtime labor costs would be the overtime hours that we select. Times the overtime labor cost per hour. The subcontracting cost would be the number of units we subcontract times the subcontracting cost per unit the hiring cost would be the workers hired times the hiring cost per worker which is 40 Firing cost would be the workers fired times the firing cost per worker or layoff cost per worker, which is 80. The back order cost is going to require another logical formula. So let's do it like this. If our negative ending inventory, or if our ending inventory is negative, okay, less than zero, then we're in a back order situation. So if we're in a back order situation, our cost will be negative one times the ending inventory, which is negative, times the back order cost per unit. Right now I have zero in the spreadsheet because it doesn't mention any back order cost in the textbook. But I want to build a, a model that will accommodate that in case we want to investigate the fact, the possibility that that costs something. If the ending inventory is not negative, then we just have a back order cost of zero. Our holding cost is going to be based on ending inventory, but again, we won't have a holding cost if ending inventory is negative. So if ending inventory is less than zero, then our holding cost is zero. Otherwise, our holding cost is ending inventory times holding cost per unit per month. Back ordering is a potential way to balance holding costs, hiring costs, firing costs, and labor costs in this model. Okay, so we have our model built, and now we need to use solver. Our objective is to minimize our total cost and that we have several sets of changing cells. Workers hired and fired with a comma, overtime hours followed by a comma so we can enter another range, subcontracted production, and production. Okay, we've got some constraints. First of all, our production that we select has to be less than or equal to our total production capacity. Next, our production has to be greater than or equal to our minimum production. This is the constraint that ensures that we meet our back order in the next month. Because we can back order demand, we don't have a constraint in this particular model 
that units available to meet demand has to be greater than demand. We can add that later to see how much benefit we're really getting from back ordering, and we'll do that. The other constraints I'm going to set are called integer constraints. We would only use integer constraints in the case where we're going to solve this as a nonlinear model. But it wouldn't make sense, in all likelihood, to have partial units. So I'll highlight the units and then use the drop down box to select INT, which is integer. In terms of production, we'll also make that an integer constraint. We didn't do this before in our other models because we could solve those as linear models. In this particular model, we can't use the simplex LP solving method because we have the if logical formulas. In this case, we'll go ahead and use the GRG nonlinear solving method and put in the integer constraints. Okay, so if we click solve, it will take a little while longer for the solver's program to cycle through and find a solution than it would with the linear model. One thing that's going to be important with the nonlinear solving method is to put reasonable starting values in the decision variables. If we start without decent starting values in the decision variables, it might get stuck in a solution that's not a good one. Another thing that I see in the output here is that Solver will sometimes change the notation to a scientific notation. But if you see this scientific notation with a negative sign here in front of the last number, it's really a number that's very, very close to zero. So our solution here is to fire some people initially higher than back. Although we have partial numbers here, I'm going to assume that we potentially could use part-time workers. And then we have a production schedule. In various months here, we have a negative ending inventory. Now, what our model does without a back order cost, you'll notice, is it essentially back orders all the inventory in the final month. So we may ultimately, we, we need to be aware of that, that the model's doing that, and that's probably inevitable. So when we roll this forecast over, maybe after another month of January, that situation should resolve itself. So I'm not going to worry too much about that right now, because we're, what we're first going to implement is the more recent, the, the months that are going to happen sooner. So our solution with back order. is that our total costs are 134,807. Just to see how much we gain by back ordering, I'm going to change this, the decision variables back to starting values. Any reasonable numbers are probably fine. then I'm going to go into Solver and just place another constraint that ensures that we meet demand on time. So this is the opposite of the backordering model. I'm going to make units available to meet demand greater than or equal to demand. This removes the possibility of backordering. So the idea is to see what backordering actually saves us. So I just need to remember that I put that constraint in there. I may want to take that in and put it up and put that constraint in and then take it out to compare different solutions. We solve again. And we can see the difference. I'm going to even
even clit solve a couple of times just to make sure um, that we get the solution we want. But if we choose not to back order, our cost is 168.90. And so we've saved about $34,000 by using the backorder option. Now it's possible that backordering actually should be costly. Okay, we use four labor hours at at least $12, so we ha I would have to assume that we sell this product for maybe $100 at least. What if half of the people that might buy one uh, that were back ordered and wanted to buy one would no longer do so if they were back ordered. Let's say our let's say our back order cost is half of the revenue that we would get from one of these. Let's take back out the back ordering constraint, or I should say, take back out the constraint that we need demand on time. I'm going to close this and put starting values back in. These starting values aren't necessarily important with simplex LP, but when we use the nonlinear model, the solutions can be sensitive to starting values. So I'm going to just start in the same place each time. So this is a backordering solution with a fairly large backorder cost. It's taking quite a while to cycle through a lot of the different solutions here. I actually hit pause on the recording. And so what we see is if we're going to attach a large back order cost, um, we're not going to back order nearly as much. We back order just a few units. So I might want to experiment with different back order costs that we thought were reasonable for our problem. What if our back order cost, for instance, is 25? Okay. If the back order cost of 50 is actually more expensive than the solution without back ordering, so we would likely just choose to go without back ordering. don't have any constraint in in terms of meeting demand on time so I'm still allowing back ordering but now at a $25 back order cost. Okay the model did eventually solve and when we have the smaller back order cost we get a solution that costs less although we still do not choose to use a lot of back ordering in the early months. Again the back ordering in December this is a function of the fact that we're not modeling this out into the future. So we would just keep that in mind and then that should resolve itself when we end up rolling over and forecasting January. Alright, so this shows how we can implement a back ordering model to potentially manage demand and um, have a more cost-effective aggregate plan.